If you haven't heard already, there's this new program out for the original Xbox intended to replace the Xbox Live service called Insignia. Xbox Live has not been around for a little over a decade. I am not here to tell you how to set that up, but I do want to bring visibility to it. Um, Insignia.live has their own website. If you sign up with them and then you use your Xbox, you can then get online and play games on Xbox Live. And you can see here, there's a list of the games that uh, have already been brought online and with player counts. It's not a whole lot right now because of the time of day I'm recording this. But I can tell you that last night I had plenty of players on Battlefront 2 that I did not get to play with for other reasons that we'll go into in this video that I'm hoping will clarify um, some of the discrepancies. And my name is Dark Phantom. I'm a modder of Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2. I'm experienced in both the console versions, the PC versions, modding, and kind of understanding how the file structure is set up. So I have a lot of experience in this area and hope that uh, this video will give you some insight into why maybe you can't join a server or maybe something isn't lining up right. And hopefully in the future, maybe you'll even try out modded versions of the Xbox uh, Battlefront games, which I'm thinking should be coming out soon. There is a nice a active... Uh, scene for modding the original xbox battlefront games because there are tools out there to do it and i would say if you're interested, uh, go google it and look for some um but anyway i'm not here to tell you how to connect to insignia or anything like that what i will say is that the insignia.live slash connect their official guide is very very strong um They've helped me with at least two of the issues that I had, and the one immediately that I think of is I use Unleash X for my Xbox, and that Unleash X does not support a dynamic IP with static DNS, which what that means is just you essentially, even though you set a static IP, have to go in and set, you have to set everything to static, even if you set your DNS statically, everything has to be static. Whenever you install Insignia, um, and go through the setup process you may notice your network settings are a little bit off this is probably one of your issues if you're using unleash x which is the rocky 5 soft mod it's, uh, it's one of the ones to select so last night i was playing insignia with uh battlefront 2 since it went live early battlefront 1 is scheduled to come online on monday which at this point is tomorrow for battlefront 2 though i encountered a strange issue and that was, I was playing last night, and I couldn't join one of the servers. Now, I could join one of the other ones, but I could not join the one that had the most people in it. And it took me a little bit to figure out um, that, well, it didn't take long to figure out, but it did uh, irritate me a little bit that I didn't plan ahead for this, was that the title they had the title update installed on this server. I have just been using a disc, or usually I use ISOs of Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2. I have the title updates on my PC, um, but I, I've switched between Xbox. The one that I'm using for Insignia did not have the title update installed. Um, so the real question was, for me was, well, it's really hard to tell what's what. And there's only the base version of the game, and then there's the title updates. That makes it a little bit easier, as opposed to PC, where there's several different updates to work between. And it can get confusing, and most people are on one version or the other, or some people like to play on the, old, on the original version. On the Xbox, there's two versions uh, for both games, actually. There is the base game and the title update, which the title update usually comes with some form of DLC. For Battlefront 2, that is going to be, uh, there's some extra maps from Battlefront 1, like Bespin, both Renvars, and Yavin Arena. I don't think there's um, Which also have custom heroes. For Battlefront 1, we have Tatooine, Jabba's Palace, and we have a couple of things that were updated in the background. That... But what will happen when you go to join these servers is that they'll have an incorrect versioning error. If you try to join a server, they're all on the same list. If you try to join a server, it'll just have incorrect version. What do you do? Well, I found a site, digix.net, I'll put the link in the description below, that has these title updates and DLCs, um, and they are in good shape, they, they work, 
Um, I cannot vouch for any of the other games. I can only vouch for the Battlefronts. Um, there's also the Clone Wars, which I'm pretty sure I have used before from this website. But right now, the Star Wars Battlefront DLC installer and the Star Wars Battlefront 2 DLC, which is the Battlefront 2 DLC, which was just updated recently, does work fine. Um, I checked it out. I recommend that you have these on your PC. They're not very big, okay? They're like, I think they were like 30 megabytes of download each. Um, download them. If that's all you want to do, um, you can just drop them on your Xbox. You run the XBE, which we'll show here in a second. And then you can go on your merry way and play the game. However, I have another concern. Um, one of the problems that came up whenever we were playing Battlefront uh, 1 and 2 on the PC version is... Some people are on either version. What if my friend is on not on the title update, and I am? And the point of Insignia was that anybody, you know, you do have to run a mod if you uh, if you want to install and do this UC Insignia service. You have to mod it at least a little bit. Just using a flat-out stock Xbox is not going to work, but it's so easy to mod an Xbox now that anybody can do it, and plus you should be opening it up to save it from the clock capacitor issue, which is well documented. Anyway, let's get to the real show here, which I'm going to show you how you get both versions of the game on your Xbox to launch them at any time. Alright, so I've pre-recorded a video here of going through launching the game and playing on Xbox Live. Um, we'll just follow along here. So I have many, many different folders here. The one we're gonna use is SWBF2 DLC. This is what the DLC installer looks like for Battlefront 2 that I showed on the website earlier. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna install Kashyyyk Assault, which I already did for the ran. Um, you're probably gonna wanna install the expansion pack and then you're going to want to launch Installer 2. If you want Duel of the Fates, go for it. Um, that's up to you. When you launch Installer 2, that'll come up with the actual, I believe it's the actual title update, which would be the XBE and some of the associated files with it. You're going to want the first one unless you're using the German version. Um, the first one has the straight up update files that you need to run this. Now, as I was installing this, I, I had a thought. Um, knowing kind of how the structure of the files works, I figured that possibly maybe I could pull the files out of my drive and then create an amalgamated version of Battlefront 2 where you could use the title update but not actually have it override all your installations. Because when you install the title update, That'll override all your installations of the game, which for me is a lot. Now, you might be saying, oh, well, I, why Phantom would you have more than one installation? Well, there's a couple of mods out there, and there are going to be more, I imagine, because of the popularity of Insignia, at least at this point. Uh, there's going to be more mods. And one of the things that comes out of it is, yeah, you would hope that the user would use the add-on system as designed by pandemic, but it doesn't always work out that way. Um, and for most of us that have modded our Xbox, we have a bigger drive that we can use. However, on the other hand, it's kind of like, I did it so that I could play with one version or the other. Now you can tell from this screen with Bespin, the Ren bars, and Yavin Arena at the bottom, that I ran the title update and this version, this version of my uh, folder was straight off the disk. Now I'm going to go play on Xbox Live, which is Insignia. I already have my account set up. And there's going to be one server here. And it is going to be the title update. I tried to play it last night. This server has been up um, all day the last two days that I've noticed. And now I can play it. Last night when I was, ha when I was playing this, I had the issue I couldn't play it. Without the, DL without the DLC being installed, it gave me a version mismatch error, and I wasn't quite sure what was going on. So I'm just going to let this play in the background a little bit, just to show you that it is working. Although I couldn't kill this guy very quickly. Um, so what you're going to end up doing is you're going to take where the DLC is installed, 
which is in your T data folder. And there are, for each game, there's an individual T data folder where it will install the DLC. And back whenever Xbox Live ran, that was on your hard drive. And then it, you put in the disc and you played it. So you're like, well, how does it override the disc, the disc functionality? Well, it, I don't know the specifics of it exactly, but the idea is that if it overrides the disk functionality, shouldn't I be able to put those files straight in the, the game itself? And the answer to that is yes, I can. So what you're going to see here is I copied off my T data and my U and my U data for some other stuff. I'm going to open up the T data folder that I pulled off my Xbox. And there are two folders that you're going to need. 1001A, and if you're doing Battlefront 1, you're going to need 1011. 10,011. <laughs> this one is Battlefront 2, so we're going to look in here. The structure of this has a an X as a dollar sign C and a dollar sign U on your Xbox. Your dollar sign C is what's going to be kind of your add-on structure here. And this is how it, uh, modders are injecting add-on maps into Battlefront 2 now um, with the help of an uh, alternate add-on system that a user named Bad Al has created. But that's not what we're totally interested in. On the um, dollar sign U is where your main payload is that kind of replaces what's on your disk. So what you're going to want to do is after you pull this off your Xbox, you're just going to want to copy all of it. You're going to want to come back to if you've created a new folder, which is hopefully why you're watching this video. You're going to come to Battlefront 2 title update folder, and you're just going to paste everything in here. And it'll overwrite some stuff and you'll be good. Now on your Xbox, you're going to want to delete the U folder. Okay, because that U folder is what's overriding on all of your games, on all of your Battlefront 2 installations. Now, when you go in game, you should be able to, on your title update version, play on the title update, which I've tested, and then on the original one, it shouldn't be overridden anymore, so you should just be able to boot it and play Battlefront 2 on the 1.0 or 1.01, .01, whatever it is on the original disc version of the game. And I don't have any video of me playing in that server, but you saw I was able to successfully play in the title update. The thought process is the same for Battlefront 1. You go, and I pulled it out of here. It's going to be an E, T data, 1011. You're going to go to U. You're going to copy this. Pandemic was nice. They structured it exactly the same way in both games. And you're going to copy this over to your Battlefront 1 title update. Now, whenever you're out in Xbox modding, which is my base folder that I move stuff over using an FTP program, I can tell you that I straight up use uh, a program called Beyond Compare. Um, I'm sure you have your own program that you use if you're doing this. And then I come to games folder and you can see I've got Battlefront 2 title update, I've got Battlefront 2 stock, and I've got Battlefront, my regular Star Wars Battlefront, I have a modded version of it, and then I have the title update. Now what I'll end up doing is I I will, when I, I intend to make mods for Battlefront 1, but I'm going to try to just wrap it in so that people can just install DLC. There's a lot of research out there how to do it. Just be able to install it just like a mod map, like the original Xbox Live DLC installer, or like we used earlier to install the Battlefront 1 DLC is the intention. Um, so let's go on over here. So I pulled up here. I have a video of me installing the, the DLC from the original Battlefront from the website I showed earlier. And you're going to want to install Java, and then you're going to click on Launch Installer 2, and then you can install the game update or your title update. And that'll allow you to play Java's Palace on your Xbox 
or play with anybody else who has the title update already installed. I'm not sure what the distribution is going to be on either of these games. Um, it's hard to tell either way what what will happen one way or the other. Um, I'm really hoping people decide that it's worth it to just play on the title update because both the title updates for both games have some expanded limits and also have some DLC that's worth it, such as Jabba's Palace. Um, I fully recommend looking into getting the DLC and, and convincing your friends that I'm sure you'll play online with to get it as well. Um, we're just going to fire up the game here so I can show you that I that using this method, um, using this, that the title update does install Java's Palace. Um, we didn't show it beforehand, but I can tell you Java's Palace plus on there. <laughs> um, so anyway, I don't think there's a whole lot else. So basically, to recap, we create a second folder of the game. We take out... We take out the the content that we got from the from the title update installers, and we put that where our where we want our title update version of the game to be. Okay, that was a little bit confusing, uh, but you're gonna have two versions. One of them is gonna not have the title update, and the other one is going to have the files you moved from the title update over there, and they'll both work, and you can switch between it as you need it, and hopefully someday. I won't have to worry about this anymore. So if you have any questions, don't be afraid to um, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're interested. I've got tons of Battlefront modding content with PC and Xbox, and I hope you all have a great day.